Comelec Commissioner Rowena Guanzon accuses Commissioner Aimi Ferrolino of deliberately delaying the vote to a disqualification case against presidential aspirant Bongbong Marcos Jr. The case is pending before the Commission on Elections First Division, where Ferrolino, Guanzon, and Marlon Casquejo sit as presiding judges. Guanzon caused a stir when she publicized her vote on the disqualification case against Marcos pending before the First Division. She notes the ponente, or writer of the ruling, Commissioner Ferrolino, has become incommunicado. Intentionally, hindi niya ilalabas dahil alam niya na yung boto ko, thank you. Para hindi na makount yung boto ko. It's a full uh, intent to delay the resolution para hindi na makount yung boto ko. Ang Commissioner Ferrolino, unfortunately, is not observing collegial courtesy and has disrespected me as her senior Commissioner and presiding commissioner. Ito ang biktima dito ang taong bayan. Dahil it's in the interest of everybody na matapos natin ang DQ cases sa Supreme Court sa madaling panahon. Guanzon says she was compelled to publicize her vote because she feels the division has already lapsed its deadline. Guanzon, who is set to retire on February 2, also hints that a politician is allegedly trying to delay the resolution. Guanzon says the evidence is clear that Marcos should be disqualified on the grounds of moral turpitude. She adds, it's a ground for disqualification under Section 12 of the Omnibus Election Code. Masama po ba o tama po ba na hindi nagbayad ng buwis apat na taon ang gobernador uh, habang ang kanyang ama ay presidente? Ang sagot ko po ay hindi po tama yan. Masama po yan. Kaya po moral turpitude yan. Meantime, Partido Federal ng Pilipinas condemns Guanzo on Friday, January 28, a day after she disclosed her vote to disqualify Marcos in the 2022 presidential race. In a statement, PFP General Counsel George Briones says Guanzo should be disbarred for her premature disclosure of her unpromulgated dissenting opinion on Marcos' disqualification case. Briones also calls Guanzo an incorrigible narcissist with an insatiable craving for posting on social media like Twitter, which is not proper for a judge. The Philippine Health Department says Metro Manila is now considered at moderate risk for COVID-19. Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Verjere on Friday, January 28, says COVID-19 cases in the capital region have gone down after a record-breaking surge driven by the Omicron variant. Verjera says the average daily COVID-19 cases in Metro Manila dropped by 67% compared to the previous week. Bulacan and Rizal have also been downgraded to moderate classification. But cases in Visayas and Mindanao are on an upward trend. On Thursday, January 27, the government says the following areas will be placed under Alert Level 3 beginning January 28 to February 15. Palawan, Camiguin, Davao Occidental, Dinagat Islands, Tawi-Tawi, and Sulu. As this develops, the Philippine government announces it will finally allow fully vaccinated tourists to enter the country starting February. Fully vaccinated returning Filipinos can now enter the country starting February 1, regardless of where they come from. Fully vaccinated foreigners from visa-free countries, meanwhile, will be allowed to enter the Philippines starting February 10. Both returning Filipinos and foreigners who are fully vaccinated are no longer required to go through mandatory quarantine. They only need a negative RT-PCR test done within 48 hours before their departure from the country of origin. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. Former Bayan Muna Congressman Neri Colmenares clinches the eighth spot in the senatorial ticket of the Isambayan Pro-Democracy Coalition. The inclusion of Colmenares in the coalition's senatorial ticket is announced Friday, January 28, during the virtual proclamation rally of Isambayan. Colmenares, who chairs Bayan Muna, now joins the seven other senatorial aspirants who were earlier endorsed by Isambayan. The other Senate bets endorsed by Isambayan are Teddy Bagila Jr. of Liberal Party, Laila Dilima of Liberal Party, Chel Jokno of Katipunan ng Nagkakaisang Pilipino, Rison Deveros of Akbayan, Alex Laxon of Kapatiran, Sonny Matula who runs as an independent candidate, and Antoni Trillanes IV of Magdalo. This is the third senatorial bid of Colmenares who ranked 24th in the 2019 senatorial race that was eventually dominated by Duterte allies. 
isang malaking karangalan sa akin na mapili bilang isa sa mga senatorial candidates ng isang bayan. Nais kong ipahayag sa ngala ng aking partido ang Makabayan Coalition, ang aming pag-endorso at malakas na suporta kay VP Lenny Robredo bilang kandidato sa pagkapangulo ng Pilipinas at kay Senator Kiko Pangilinan bilang Vice President. The Nobel Foundation says its official websites were the subject of distributed denial of service or DDoS attacks on Nobel Day, December 10, 2021. The Nobel Day was when the prize ceremonies were being live-streamed from Oslo in Stockholm. In a press release a month after the incident, the foundation says the DDoS attack affected the Nobel Prize and Nobel Peace Prize websites. Among the Nobel laureates at Nobel Day 2021 were journalist Dmitry Moratov and Rappler CEO Maria Ressa. Their keynote speeches highlighted the importance of press freedom. The foundation calls the DDoS attack a long-term threat to the freedom of expression. DDoS attacks flood websites with fake traffic that may lead to downtime. In the Philippines, news websites such as Alter Media, ABS-CBN, and Rappler have been the subject of such attacks. Writer Lualhati Bautista gets an offer from Penguin Classics to publish her landmark novel Decada Setenta under their imprint. On her Facebook page, the writer shares an excerpt from an email she says she received from Penguin Classics publisher Elder Rotor on January 5. In the email, Rotor says she was intrigued by the work and its impact and study in Philippine classrooms. She then goes on to ask Lualhati if she is interested in publishing the novel as a Penguin Classic. Originally written in Tagalog, Decada Setenta tells the story of a middle-class family living through the dangers of Ferdinand Marcos' dictatorship in 1970s Philippines. The novel won a Palanca Award in 1983, bagging the grand prize for novels written in Filipino. It was also turned into a film starring Vilma Santos.